stretching. Some runners swear by it, others avoid it completely. And if you Google it, you'll find arguments for both sides. But the problem is that if you do it the wrong way, it can actually make you run slower. My name is Nicholas, I'm a sports scientist, physiotherapist, and former professional triathlete. And in this video, I'm gonna show you the science-based answer to whether or not stretching can actually improve performance, what stretching does for injury prevention, if it helps with recovery, and where stretching actually makes the biggest difference. So first things first, what even is stretching in scientific terms? There are basically three different types of stretching. The first one is called static stretching. This is what most people think about when they talk about stretching. You move into a position where your muscles feel stretched and then you keep it there, usually for 15 to 60 seconds. Think of touching your toes and just staying there. It can be done on your own or with the help of a partner. The second type of stretching is what's called dynamic stretching. Instead of holding a specific position, you move your muscles through its full range of motion. Dynamic stretching comes in two flavors. Active stretching, which is smooth controlled movements. Like like swinging your leg back and forth, and ballistic stretching, which is the old school bouncing method at the end of the range. This used to be popular, but it's discouraged now because it increases the risk of injury. The third type of stretching is pre-contraction stretching, better known as PNF stretching. This is where it gets a bit more advanced, but stick with me here, I'll keep it simple. PNF stands for proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. It sounds fancy, I know, and if you say to a client that you're about to do some proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation, then you sound smart. But basically it just means that you contract the muscle that you're about to stretch before you go into a deeper stretch. So for example, if I want to stretch my tricep here, I can try to push against my hand here to contract the tricep, then relax, and then I could get deeper into that stretch. It's one of those things that feels incredible because you can actually see yourself becoming more flexible in a matter of seconds. The idea is that the contraction inhibits the muscle when you relax, so it's easier to go into a deeper stretch. Now that we know what stretching really means, let's talk about the big question. Does it actually improve performance? Well, a recent scientific review from 2025 looked at the acute and chronic effects of stretching on running economy, and they found something interesting. Maybe you've heard that stretching before a run makes you run slower because it decreases muscle stiffness, and muscle stiffness is linked to better running economy. It sounds convincing, right? The problem is, it's not actually true. When the researchers dug into the evidence, they found that stretching doesn't negatively affect running economy at all. In other words, doing a few stretches before your run does not suddenly make you less efficient. That's a myth. However, static stretching has actually been shown to decrease maximal strength. A meta-analysis from 2024 found that strength did go down after static stretching. But on the other hand, they found no link between stretching and athletic performance. So what should we make of all this? At its best, static stretching does nothing to make you run faster or make you run slower. But at its worst, it might hinder your maximal strength. So my take is that before a run, dynamic stretches can be totally fine because they warm up your muscles and your system for the work that you're going to do. But static stretches, I would probably not do just because it might hinder that maximal strength. But what about after your run? Does stretching help with injury prevention? Honestly, this has been a nail biter to follow. Every couple of years, new research seems to flip the story. For example, in 2024, a review came out showing that static stretching reduced muscle injuries by about 63% compared to not stretching. That's huge! But when it came to tendon injuries like the Achilles or the patella tendon, there was no clear benefit. Fast forward just one year to 2025 and a new meta-analysis with over 9,000 athletes found the opposite. Stretching did not lower the risk of injuries at all. Muscles, tendons, joints, it didn't matter, there were no effect. But this last study has not yet been peer reviewed, so it might change again. So what should we take away from all this? Right now, the best evidence says that stretching is not a magic shield against injuries. It might help your muscles, but it's not reliable enough to depend upon. Instead, your 
your injury prevention toolkit should lean more towards strength training, proper recovery, and smart training load. Stretching can feel good and it can improve your flexibility, but don't expect it to make you bulletproof. But what about recovery? Can stretching help you bounce back faster and reduce soreness? This has been studied a lot and the results are surprisingly consistent. A recent review from 2025 looked at multiple randomized control trials on post-exercise stretching. They measured things like muscle soreness, recovery of strength and range of motion in the hours and days after a workout. And here's what they found. Stretching did not make a meaningful difference. Whether you stretched or just rested, recovery looked about the same. So here's the takeaway. Stretching is not a recovery hack. If you like how it feels, there's nothing wrong with it. It can be relaxing, it can help you cool down, and it might make you feel looser. But if your goal is faster recovery, you're better off focusing on your nutrition and your sleep. That's where the real gains come from. So what can we actually use stretching for? There is one key area where stretching truly shines. A meta-analysis from 2024 found that stretching frequently for more than two weeks can chronically increase the range of motion of a joint. Meaning if you stretch, you get better mobility. And that can be crucial for runners. You see, if you are limited in how your joints can move, your ability to have an efficient running economy can be limited too. Think about hip extension, for example. If your hip flexors are tight, you will shorten your stride. But if you improve your hip mobility, then you can extend your stride further behind you. That will give you a slightly longer stride and help you become more efficient. It's the same story with ankle mobility. If your ankles are too stiff, it changes how your foot strikes the ground and how effectively you can push off. There is something to be said about when you need stiffness and when you need mobility, but in general, most people need a bit more mobility in my experience. So here's the TLDR for you. Stretching won't make you run faster, recover quicker, or suddenly remove your injuries. A static stretching before a run can actually reduce your maximal strength, so stick to dynamic stretches for your warm-up. Where stretching does shine is in improving mobility over time. Better hip mobility can unlock smoother form and more efficient running. And if you want to see how better mobility actually translate into a more efficient form, then I'll show you exactly how you can fix your own running form in just 10 minutes in this video right here.